Hello, anyone home? Stop it. Stop wasting your money. Buying that equipment is not going to make you sing like Michael Jackson. Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. This is not a review. This is not a tutorial. This is a discussion of consumer behavior with audio gear, because I have made a lot of mistakes with audio gear, and I've seen a lot of people make a lot of mistakes with audio gear, so I wanted to share five tips with you to hopefully keep you from wasting a bunch of money. Tip number one, avoid following the trend. I know how tempting it can be to just follow the trends because then you don't have to think about anything. If you see a bunch of people using the Blue Yeti or the Shure SM7B, that probably means it's not a terrible device, so you're probably safer buying it, but I don't think you should go down that road. Instead, what you should be doing is making a list of your requirements and then seeking audio equipment that meet those requirements. For example, if you're looking for a microphone that does really well with background noise rejection, you might want to go for the Rode Procaster over the Shure SM7B, but if you're looking for a microphone that does really good with plosive rejection, you would probably want to go with the SM7B over the Rode Procaster. Another more extreme example is if you're looking to distance mic yourself or boom mic yourself, probably don't want to go with something like the Shure SM7B unless your name is Sound Speeds, and you should probably start looking at small diaphragm condensers or shotgun microphones. And unfortunately for you, that does mean that you should be doing a little bit more research, and research takes time, which leads us to tip number two, and tip number two is avoid impulse purchases. If you don't know what impulse purchases are, it's pretty much buying something as soon as you determine that you want it without giving it much thought. And I think you should be avoiding this at all costs because impulse purchases rarely meet your expectations and frequently will lead to buyer's remorse. So instead of jumping from the I want it to I'm going to buy it phase, I would recommend bookmarking that product page on your browser, waiting a couple of weeks. Then after that wait period, if you still want and if you still need that product, then I would consider purchasing it because you have avoided making that really quick purchasing decision. And during that wait time, you can do a lot more research into the product, watching a bunch of reviews and reading a bunch of write-ups to make sure that it is the right choice for you. Tip number three, avoid buying the dream. I don't mean that you shouldn't have dreams. That is not what I'm saying. What I do mean is a lot of us buy the idea of the equipment as opposed to the equipment itself. What I mean by that is we may learn that Michael Jackson used the SM7 on Thriller. We may want to buy the SM7 or the SM7B thinking Michael Jackson used that. So if I buy it, I'll sound like Michael Jackson without including in the equation that we don't have Michael Jackson's voice or Quincy Jones producing us. We need to stay grounded in reality and buy equipment based on the equipment as opposed to the dream of what the equipment will help us reach because equipment is just a tool. It will not alter our talent or skills or abilities. Now, I know there are instances where the gear and equipment will have minor impacts on your ability, like the size or the shape of a guitar neck, but that's not going to have a massive impact on your ability. The point I'm trying to make is the biggest contributing factor to the final product being great is going to be your skill and ability, not the equipment. Tip number four, avoid going into debt. I know how tempting it is to want to buy all the gear in the world when you see 0% financing for 18 months, but I really believe that you should avoid going into debt to buy non-essential items such as audio equipment. And yes, I understand there can be an argument made for a 0% loan when inflation is 7, 8, 10% because as you pay it off in a year, a year and a half, you're paying that loan off with dollars that are less valuable than dollars today. I understand that, but I still think you should avoid it because there is one factor that we cannot determine. We cannot tell the future. Or if you can tell the future, get in touch. I would love some investment tips. I'm sure that's all above board. But really, we can't tell the future. People can lose their jobs. Financial situations can change. So I think it's bad practice to get into debt to buy something that is non-essential like audio equipment. Instead, I think the best course of action would be to continue to use the equipment that you have, save up the money that's required, and then buy the equipment that you want to upgrade to. That means you will not have any issues in the future when you lose your job, you lose your income stream, and you have a debt payment coming up. 
And tip number five, do not pay scalper prices. This seems to be increasing in frequency, and as the supply chain gets funkier and funkier, I imagine we will see more and more of it, but my advice is do not pay scalper prices under any circumstance if it can be avoided. If an item is sold out at the official retailers and then you go on to secondhand markets like Reverb or eBay and you see that the microphone is listed at two times, three times or more, I would say just be patient because unless the item has been discontinued, audio manufacturers, they want your money. They will put it back in stock and you will be able to get it. So just be patient and then you should be able to get the item at the MSRP or manufacturer suggested retail price, which is a lot better than a scalper's price. There's also a really great bonus to being patient and not paying the scalper's premium. If nobody patronizes the scalpers, they will not sell their inventory, meaning they will not earn any money, and that will hopefully disincentivize people in the future from adopting that flipping behavior where they buy a bunch of product, turn around, mark it up two times, and sell it on the secondhand market. That's all that I've got for you today. I know this was a lot different than usual, but this is something that's been bouncing around in my head for a while. I don't just want to review gear because... I think that can lead to overconsumption. I also want to advocate for fiscal responsibility, like not going into debt, not doing impulse purchasing, pretty much everything that I talked about in this video. So I hope it was useful. If you did find it fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it? Thumbs down? These people are amazing. I love you. I will talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you then. Bye.